Hey everyone, it's Ivan, KeepAdger.com, here to bring you another review, and today we're talking guns. This guy right here, which is the Radian Model 1. I think it's pretty important to create a little context, so how did I end up with this Radian Model 1? Well, in 2018, I was getting ready to go and compete in the tactical games, and the rifle I was going to use, I had actually won earlier in the year, small little, like, kind of media event competition, and I won this rifle, I'm like, cool, like, I'm gonna go compete with that rifle. But it never made it. Right hand not talking to the left hand, someone sitting on their hands, I don't know what, but it didn't make it. And so, like, a week or so prior to going to this event, I'm like, I need a rifle. Obviously, I have a couple different rifles, probably could have run one, but from the con or from the standpoint rather of creating content, wanted to try something new. So got on the phone, started calling some different manufacturers. Radian said, we can do that. And they got right on it and shipped one out to a FFL actually out in Georgia because a week prior to the recoil or the tactical games, it's going to be in Georgia for the IV8888 shoot. So had it shipped out to FFL there, ended up while I was there, hanging out with my buddy David and his family, went, picked it up, ended up putting these Scalar Works iron sights on, as well as a little RMR on the Scalar Works mount. Next day, took off for North Carolina. That day I ended up going, meeting Spiro from Minuteman Munitions, cool dude, hooked me up with a bunch of ammo to go compete with. And we went and I shot this for the very first time, zeroed it. Once I got my zero, I was like, all right, time to go. Headed down south in North Carolina, down to Fayetteville. Next morning, started event one of basically a two day competition in which I used this rifle. If you follow my content, you'll know that it worked out well for me. I ended up coming in second place in the elite division. Was it because of this rifle? Probably not. Did this rifle contribute to it? Absolutely. Overall, there's some pretty cool stuff going on with it, which I will show you. On its face, it looks like an AR, and it is. It is a direct impingement AR pattern rifle, but honestly, devil's in the details. With this, the receiver set is 7075 T6 aluminum, all billet, and the way the receiver set actually mates up with the hand guards is pretty rad. Like, obviously, a lot of attention to detail, but in addition to that, it's rock solid. Stainless steel anti-rotation pins, stuff along those lines. While this doesn't really matter for a lot of people as far as how the hand guard mates with the receiver, if you're doing something where you're actually mounting something that matters off of your rail, like say IR laser or something along those lines, having a really solid upper receiver like complete actually becomes really important. As far as the barrel, barrel is 416R stainless steel, one and eight twist. This happens to be a 14.5 inch pinned and welded with the flash hider from Dead Air basically interfaces with dead air suppressors. I will say, not a huge fan of it. Not because it doesn't work, more just to the effect of, for my needs, a muzzle brake would probably work better, but this is what came with it. More on the barrel later, but I will say it is guaranteed sub MOA with Black Hills ammunition. As far as other stuff going on with this, we have, again, going back to all those little details. So. Stuff that you maybe necessarily wouldn't appreciate, but after you've handled a bunch of ARs, you begin to appreciate. Even the takedown pins, really smooth, really easy to manipulate versus ones that you have to like punch out. And it's that way across the entire board. Obviously, they use their Radiant Selector switch, super smooth, really distinct. And they also use their charging handle, which again, works really well. Beyond that, there's actually some pretty cool proprietary stuff with this. While there are obviously plenty of similarities with this and other ARs, there's something that completely separates it, which is the lower receiver. It uses their ADAC. 
ambidextrous dual action control. What is it? It's an ambidextrous lower. So with that, you have ambidextrous controls. Over on the left side, we have a magazine release. Nothing super special so far. Then on the right side, we obviously have our selector switch. Again, nothing super special. We lock our bolt to the rear. We have a bolt release over on the right side. Pretty cool. Makes it faster if you're right-handed, but all that's been done. So for me, the real magic is in the machining around this mag release. So it's a mag release, right? Well, it is, but when you depress the mag release, not only will you drop the mag, but if you keep it depressed and run the charging handle, you can lock the bolt to the rear. For me personally, that was like mind blowing. Like my mind melted when I saw it. I'm like, what? Why is that cool? Well, if you've ever had a malfunction, furthermore, if you've ever been in a capacity where clearing a malfunction can basically mean whether you go home or whether you die on the spot, like that's pretty important, right? So rather than traditionally ending up getting some sort of malfunction, type three, like a double feed, the first thing we're trying to do is like break it, try and lock it back and strip the mag out, get whatever out of there. This completely streamlines that process to where, again, locked it back, dropped the mag. If I need to, I can strip it out if it's stuck, go into the process of clearing that malfunction. I think that's really cool. Granted, 25 yards on paper, if that's your thing, this doesn't really matter. But if you're in a capacity where you carry this for reals, Something like that, that little bit of time savings, I think is really important. I actually ended up going out to the range to basically prove it out and see how it did for me using this as well as just standard AR. And for me personally, it was at least a solid second faster, basically clearing amount or sorry, clearing double feeds. Solid second faster. Is that worth the premium? I don't know. Like I guess it depends. Again, 25 yards on paper, maybe not. If your life depends on it, yeah, it might be. Again, back to those details. The QD socket on the back is actually a steel insert rather than just having a aluminum end plate. Aluminum gets beat up by QD sockets. So actually having a stainless steel insert, it's pretty key. And one of the things that I will say absolutely contributed to my success at the tactical games beyond just the accuracy of this rifle is the trigger. So the Model 1 comes with a ATC AR Gold match grade trigger. It's adjustable. I didn't adjust it. It's about three pounds. The reset is super short and clean, not to mention just the trigger break. And what that allowed for me during the games is to confidently know between the ammunition I was using from Minuteman Munitions, after having this thing zeroed, even though I zeroed it the day prior, knowing that this thing shot really well, I wasn't out there measuring groups, but I got a really good 50 yard zero with it. And knowing how well this shot, in addition to just being confident in the zero I had, coupled with this trigger, what it allowed is I'm there, I'm gassed out, I'm breathing hard. Soon as the sights were on tri or as soon as the sights were on trigger, as soon as my sights were on target, immediately input boom broke the shot, knowing that it was gonna go where I wanted. I wasn't like trying to fight through like 15 pounds of sand in the trigger. It was just sights on target, boom, settle, sights on target, boom. Kept breaking my shot. This absolutely contributed to that between the just overall accuracy to include the trigger. For me personally, as long as I was doing my part, I could absolutely validate their claim of sub MOA accuracy. At 100 yards, I could get this thing shooting under an inch with good ammunition. So where does that come into play? Training ammunition, this thing will do about two and a half MOA. Is that good? I think it's good, especially for, yeah, like training. So where does the accuracy actually come into play with something like this? Well, competition or, again, the ultimate competition if this is, say, a work gun and you're going to defend yourself with it. 
That's where accuracy becomes really important. Why? Well, if you have a target and you're trying to engage it at, I don't know, we'll say 300 yards, and the rifle you have has like a sewer pipe for a barrel, and the ammunition you're using isn't that good, so maybe perfect conditions, that rifle is capable of four MOA, for example. Well, at 300 yards, if you're doing everything correct, that four MOA is now basically a 12 inch pattern. Your round, if you're doing everything perfect, your round's gonna be somewhere within 12 inches out there. Ah, that might be unacceptable especially from a competition, whether it's competition because I want to win a trophy or competition because I want to win and come home and be alive, the ultimate competition, that accuracy becomes really important to include your ammo because as you push this out to, again, say 300 yards, well, if I do everything correct, that round's going to be somewhere within a three inch circle. That's giving me a margin of error because this will do its job. It's a matter of you as the operator, like, can you get the most out of this? Probably not, but if we can eliminate variables, i.e. ammunition, rifle, that mechanical accuracy, then the only variable, the only input we have that can basically change the outcome is us. And if you have something that is really accurate from a mechanical standpoint, it basically narrows essentially that margin of error. So gives us more room to make errors and actually still get good hits at distance, if that makes sense. Right here, I have my first group and my second group using the PMC 556 62 grain green tip. This, if it wasn't for that guy, would have been pretty decent, but with that, looking at just over 1.5 inches. Right here's my second group. You have one, two, three, four, five. I'm assuming that was probably pulled since Majority of my shots are below here, always keeping this as my point of aim, but either way. Edge to edge on that, looking at 2.4 inches. Right over here, this was with the PPU223 stuff right here, the 69 grain hollow point boat tip, their Remington match. And first group actually was pretty good. This is my last shot right here. And right there, looking at just over, yeah, just over one inch, like 1.03 inches. And if we didn't have that guy, even though we do, it would have been about 0.65 inches. Down here, I have no idea. I will say I had a little bit of mirage, but that same ammo, second group here, <laughs> all those rounds and edge to edge looking at just shy of two inches about 1.94 inches but again that's what I got with that radian today These last two groups I shot with this stuff, the PPU match line, 223, hollow point boat tip, 75 grain. Not really impressed with the groups I got. I don't know that it's necessarily indicative of the ammo, the last groups I shot today, but it's what I got. Uh, this guy right here is 1.75 inches, and the second group, about 1.3 inches, but that's what I got.
The best ammunition I tried was by Minutemen Munitions. While their 556 55 grain full metal jacket would give me consistently about 2.5 MOA, their 223 68 grain boat tip hollow point using Hornady Match AMP projectiles, those, as long as I was doing my part, would give me sub MOA, getting me down to around 0 0.8, 0 0.85 inches, five shot groups. Having said all that, is this rifle for everyone? Probably not. Honestly, maybe some of these features people don't need. Maybe they don't need the accuracy or want it. And in addition to that, they're expensive. These rifles run about 2,600 bucks. And while I'm sure there's sticker shock right there, appreciate that there's actually a lot that goes into these as well. Like the machining alone on the lower receiver, I don't know how long it takes, but I'm sure it is a very long time. There's a lot of stuff going on. In addition to that, just all the details. All of their guns, while they are hard coat anodized on top of that, they're also Cerakoted. Not only are they Cerakoted, but the upper receiver, lower receiver, and the handguards are all Cerakoted together. Why is that important? Well, you end up with everything actually matching, whether it's this or their green or their flat dark earth. They all actually match rather than having random like two-tone stuff. And yeah, it's really about those little details. So again, is it for everyone? Probably not. Do I think it's probably one of the coolest things with respect to AR platforms? I do. And I'm sure someone will say it like, why not just put a bad lever on there? Yeah, put a bad lever on there. What I will say is bad levers, or more importantly, bolt catch bolt release, weren't made to have weight hanging off of them. And consequently, bad levers might work for you or might not, who knows? It's one more thing to snag, get caught, all those other things. Who knows? And real quick, speaking of things snagging or getting caught, magazine release on the left side. I get it. It's ambidextrous. I can appreciate that. Personally, I would rather not have that there. Reason being is anything spending enough time against gear and moving can get depressed, whether your safety selector goes from safe to fire, or in my case, actually running like the worst run probably of my life in the tactical games, ended up depressing this, mag dropped out. Was it a big deal in that instance? Absolutely not. But it's one of those things that can happen, especially with ambidextrous controls. Of course, me being selfish and right-handed, I would rather not have a left-handed mag release. Of course, if I ever lost use of my primary hand, I would really appreciate that, but it is what it is. If you're interested, you can go check them out at their site. They offer, obviously, 5.56 chambered in 223 Wild in 5.56 NATO, I believe it is. They also have 300 Blackout, offer SBRs as well as pistols from like eight point something inches all the way up to, I think, like 18 inch SPRs, but Check them out. They're pretty cool. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.